So in this Go Temple HTMX mailing list app I've been building for myself, this is just an internal tool that I plan to use. So I wanted to add the simplest authentication I possibly could, where you type in a password, and if you get the password correct, it's gonna set a session ID on your cookie in the browser, and then it's going to basically redirect you to another page where we check that session ID and make sure that it is something that the, the server knows about. There's a couple things I need to add in, like for example, if I type in a wrong password, it'd be nice if I showed like a, an error message. I plan to bring in HTMX to do that. But let's just type in YOLO and click login, and you'll see I get redirected back to dashboard list. If I go over to application here, I can click on the cookies, and you'll see a random ID pop up, okay? So here's my session ID, and the reason this works is because my Go server is storing this in a internal memory map. And every time you make a, f a future request, it's gonna take that session ID and check the map and say, hey, is this a session that I already know about? And if it is, it's gonna go ahead and allow them to view the page. If not, it kicks them back to the login page. So for example, if I change this to C and then just refresh the page, it kicks them out because Go doesn't know that that even exists on the map that's internal. Another thing we have is if you, uh, and then we also have a logout button. So the logout button up here, all this does is delete that session ID from a list and then it deletes the cookie from the user. So now I'm logged out and I can't use that session again. So this will be a little walkthrough about Go and Temple and HTMX. Um, so let's go ahead and first look at the login temple. I think it's good to start with the templates and understand how they work. Here's a template. Basically, we have a form. And when you click on the submit button of this form, it's gonna call an action with a post request called login. And it's gonna send over this password here. So we have a password field, and then let's go and find that. Typically the way I structure my app is in the controller that's next to the template. You'll probably find the action that it's gonna be calling. Over here, we get the password from the form data that was passed in, and then we check if the password was valid. Okay, so I have an auth package that just says, is password valid? That verifies that the password sent in matches the environment variable I have set on the deployed server. In our case, I have a .env file and the password set to YOLO. That's why it works. And so if you don't pass a valid password, we redirect you back to the login page, simple enough. If it was a valid password, we set your session. Let's check this one out. What this does is it's going to generate a random session ID. So this is going to generate a random uh, list of 16 characters, and then it returns it back. Let's go up here, and then we basically store that inside of that map, which I talked about in Go. You can create a map of strings to Booleans, kind of like a JavaScript object or any type of map in any data structure. And then up here, we have a session store, which is tracking the sessions and to know if they're logged in or not. Okay. And then we also set a response header so that the cookie can get sent back to the browser and then we give them that session ID. So now that user who logged in, he's the only person who knows what that session ID is. And then feature requests, what we do is let's just go to the login controller and that is going to basically send back a response header called HX redirect. This is where HTMX comes in. Basically, if you start using HTMX in your forms, so like HX post, you can't just like redirect from your Go controller. You actually have to set a header to cause the user to redirect um, because again, this is like pulling in JavaScript and client-side functionality for us automatically. And so it doesn't know what to do with the status codes that were sent back. I also had to add HX swap so that it doesn't like swap out the entire page with whatever's returned here. And by the way, I'm still trying to learn HTMX. So is there anything I do that's wrong, let me know. But now I've sent back a status code and the page will basically get that response and that will hopefully redirect back to the dashboard. So let's go to the dashboard temple. I believe this is where we get redirected. This is just a list that kind of fetches all of the emails from our database and then displays them. But the controller is where I do some authentication checks, right? So we have a dashboard list page and I have a middleware. This is very similar to Express or any other type of uh, web servers you might have used where I put these middleware functions in front of my logic where we check to make sure that you have the correct session ID in your cookie. So over here, again, we check if we're not authenticated, redirect back to login. And then we call c.next, which is a fiber construct to basically say, okay, now you can continue on to the actual implementation here if you have a correct cookie. So let's look at this is authenticated function. Uh, luckily, it's just right down here. So we can say, get the current user session ID from the request. So if you look at this, all it's doing is getting the session cookie. 
And then we need to first check if the session ID was part of that map that we have defined up here. If it exists, then we can just basically say, yes, they're authenticated. Now I'm also checking to make sure that their session ID is not equal to an empty string. This would basically return an empty string if the session cookie is not set. So that's something that I'm also checking just for extra security. I don't know if it's really needed. I think if you were to try to look up a uh, like an empty string here, it'd probably give you back uh, nothing. But I'm not too sure I had to play around with that. I don't, I'm not 100% sure how Go maps work. Um, but if you try to access a non-existing key, what does it return? False? I would assume so. Okay, and so yeah, like I said, like if everything is good, we will then be able to get the emails from the database and render them out using server-side rendering to the page. We pass that to a temple where in this email list panel, we again just take in the emails here and then down here at the bottom at some point, we loop over them and display them to the page. So the last thing I wanna check out is the logout functionality. Again, it's, you probably already know by now what it does. You hit this login endpoint, it clears your session, which is going to basically delete the session from the map, and then it also sets an empty session cookie. Okay, so session value of nothing. So that'll just wipe out the cookie, and then the user can no longer make requests because they don't have the right session. And of course, we redirect back to the login page. Now again, this is mainly because this is an internal site that only I want to be able to use. Now I will say, Fiber has like more sophisticated auth packages already, like basic auth. You could literally just do basic authentication where you have a username and a password. It just feels like, why do I have a username when I'm the only person who can log in to the system, okay? Um, but just keep that in mind. They have a bunch of different middleware adapters, basic auth, caching. Definitely read through this list and verify that you're not doing something or reinventing the wheel because that wheel might be there for you already to use. All right, well, that's all I wanted to share with you all in this video. Hope you guys learned a little bit about Go, HTMX, Temple. Yeah, stay tuned for the next video. Have a good day. Happy coding.